Hey guys, thanks for joining. In this video, we're going to take a look at problem 2100 on lead code, find good days to rob the bank. So what we'll do here is first we'll go over the problem description and take a look at the examples provided. Then we'll discuss different ways we can implement a solution to the problem. We'll call out any edge cases we have to account for in our implementation. We'll discuss what kind of data structures and algorithms we can use to make this as efficient as possible. And finally, we'll go ahead and actually implement the code and submit the code that we've written. I'm going to be coding this in Java, but if you want to follow along in a different language, that's fine as the concepts do carry over from language to language. So let's get started. The problem reads, you and a gang of thieves are planning on robbing a bank. You are given a zero indexed integer array security, or security I is the number of guards on duty on the ith day. The days are numbered starting from zero. You are also given an integer time. The ith day is a good day to rob the bank if there are at least time days before and after the ith day. The number of guards at the bank for the time days before I are non-increasing and the number of guards at the bank for time days after I are non-decreasing. Return a list of all days zero index that are good days to rob the bank. The order that the days are returned in does not matter. So let's take a look at the examples. So in the first example we have security is equal to these values 5333562 and the time is equal to 2. The output is 2 and 3 meaning the indices 2 and 3 as shown here. The explanation is that on day 2 this one all of the values to the left within time, so in other words, two values to the left are non-increasing, and the two values to the right are non-decreasing. And the same condition holds with the value at index 3, which is the same as the value at index 2. The two to the left are non-increasing, and the two to the right are non-decreasing. And those are the only two days that satisfy this. And notice that it's kind of like local minima here. So it's not exactly a local minima because we have three values of three in a row. It's sort of a low point within this time threshold window. In example two, we have consecutive ones, time is equal to zero. We can actually use any single day as a good day to rob the bank. Notice that when time is zero, these conditions here don't really apply, right? There are at least zero days before and after the i day, which will always be true. The number of guards at the bank for time days before I, zero days before I are non-decreasing, so that doesn't come into play. And the next one also doesn't come into play. So this is sort of a trivial example where no matter what the input is, we'll always just return an output like this. For example, three, we have security is equal to one through six, time is equal to two, there are no good days to rob the bank. And that's because there are no points where the order is non-increasing, so we would need at least two consecutive days of non-increasing order, non-increasing values that is, but we don't have that here, so there's no output. So let's think about how we can implement a solution to this. As I called out in example one, we're kind of looking for a local minima. so. We can use the concept of an algorithm which finds the local minima and maxima in an array and bring that here. So if you're not familiar with that algorithm, I have a link in the description. Feel free to pause the video and take a look at that. And once done, come back and we'll continue from there. So the summary of that algorithm is we iterate through the array and for each item, if the value before it is greater than and the value after it is less than, we've just found a local minima. Now here we have to deal with or equals condition, right? The three is equal to the three before, the three after, same thing with the other threes there. But we still need to consider that kind of as a local minima. So I'll call it local minima like. Now we need to find local minima like values, I'll call it, where the time window lets us have all these conditions satisfied. So the time window itself is going to have to encompass the item at the center as well as time to the left and time to the right. So at the index is equal to two, the time window is actually these two plus that item plus these two. So times you go to two, the time window is going to be five. It'll be two times time plus one for any case. So we have to make sure that we find local minima where the value is at least as large as the time window. So we're going to split up the task into two parts. The first part is we're going to iterate through the array and find indices where the value before it is greater than or equal to, and that's it. On the second run, we'll go and iterate and find values where the value after it is greater than or equal to. So we'll have two arrays instead of just one. Then we can use the result of that to combine and find just the indices that are valid to this problem. So I'm going to copy in a table where we look at those values. So for the first example, we have this, the input given here. That first list, which I just described, num days before, will map the index of the original input to how many days prior to it satisfy the condition of being non-increasing. 
So if we look at the first index, that'll always be zero for this because there's nothing before it. The first one we see three is less than or equal to five, so we add one. The second one, three is less than or equal to three, so we have two. And the reason we have two is because we're actually just taking the previous value and adding one to it. So in that sense, it's similar to a subsum array. This three here, same thing as before, we take the value previous and add one to it, so now we have three. With five, five is greater than three, so we've broken that rule, so we have to reset it back to zero. Six, greater than five, same thing, we've broken the rule. And at last, two is less than six, we, we have the rule again, so we add plus one. Now, num days after is a similar approach, but we're going to go from the right to the left. So the rightmost value will always be zero because there's nothing to the right of it. Six here is greater than two, so we don't do anything, we leave it as zero. Five is less than six, so we have the, the next one, plus one is here. Three is less than five, so we take that one here, add one, we have two. Same thing, three and four, and then finally five is greater than three, so we reset it back to zero. Now, if we look at the output indices of two and three here, we'll notice that the values in both arrays are greater than or equal to time. There are other places where one of the values is greater, like here, but this is the only place where both values are equal to or greater than. So that's how we're going to find our answer. We're going to check for values in both arrays where the actual values are equal to or greater than time. So in that sense, we split up the local minima into two parts, and we have a working algorithm. So let's go ahead and actually implement that algorithm and then run it. First thing we'll do is just initialize our output array. Then we'll keep track of the valid number of days before and after. And notice that these will always be the same size as security. Then iterate left to right for none days before. If security i is less than or equal to security i minus one. Notice we're starting at, at position one because this would fail if we started at zero because of zero minus one. So if that condition holds none days before i is equal to 1 plus num days before i minus 1. And do keep in mind that it does reset when the condition fails. So as we see here, it resets to 0 and then comes back to 1. Now iterate right to left for num days after. Basically the same thing we've just done here. Int i is equal to security.length minus 2 i is greater than or equal to 0, i minus minus. If security i is greater than or equal to security i minus 1, num days before is equal to i plus num days before. So th that's i plus 1, not i minus 1. I thought that was weird. i plus 1. Now we've assembled both of those arrays, we just need to compare them to each other. So we're going to iterate over time windows. i is equal to time. If i is less than time, we don't have enough time within that window. So we can just ignore those values right off. Same thing on the right side, security dot like minus time i plus plus. If num days before i is greater than or equal to time and num days after i greater than equal to time, good days dot add i. So in the case where both of them satisfy, we add it. And lastly, we'll return good days. So let's go ahead and run this and see how it performs. Okay, so I've run it a few times just to check how the execution varies from run to run. Overall, it looks like we have a performance solution, so I think we can accept the implementation that we have here. So that covers the content for this video. If you made it to the end, please leave a like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon for notifications for more LeetCode videos. Plus, it really does help out the channel. And also be sure to check out our website, bitethisstore.com, where we have tons of different programming articles related to data structures and algorithms, web development, and other topics, as well as an online store with mugs, laptop sleeves, and other products centered around programming memes and programming humor. Definitely worth taking a look. Thanks for watching.